this is Terry from Paleo Cinema Podcast, and here are the 10 worst movies from 2018 and from 2017 that are caught a bit late. I don't know how you feel about watching a bad movie in a cinema. I'm okay with it up to a point. On the good side, there's getting a drink and a chocked up ice cream and getting out of the house and seeing movie trailers you've already seen on YouTube on a much larger screen and then going down and buying stuff I don't need at JB Hi-Fi. But then there's also seeing a really bad movie. Knowing what doesn't work on films is as important as knowing what does in its own way. A movie like Plan 9 from Outer Space can show you as much about how movies work as a movie like The Rules of the Game or Citizen Kane. So on that profound note, here are my worst 10 movies I saw in 2018. Oh, I have a parasite. Yeah. There's a theory that's rarely spoken aloud that says that any Marvel property is a license to print money. Now, I'm not going into the history of Venom, the character here. I'm just looking at the movie itself. Venom disproves that theory. Tom Hardy's character, Eddie Brock, in this movie is what we here in Australia call a dickhead. He's supposed to be an investigative journalist, but he doesn't have the patience or attention to detail to do the job. He steals information from his lover, Anne Wei, played by Michelle Williams, while he's investigating Riz Ahmed's admittedly evil Life Corporation, which is experimenting on human subjects with an alien symbiont. Eddie, because he has the impulse control of a teething two-year-old, goes in and confronts Carlton Drake, the character played by Riz Ahmed, and starts uttering libelous accusations. The accusations are true, but the fact that he gets thrown out and loses his job doesn't get Eddie where he wants to be. Then breaks into the Life Corporation and gets infected by the Venom symbiont, which sounds like Tom Hardy imitating Oliver Reed. The symbiont then starts eating people. Shit happens, people die, Drake gets his own symbiont, and we get the usual two computer-generated characters fighting each other at night, of course, because that way the CG doesn't look as silly, and the movie ends. So let's just deconstruct that for a moment. We're supposed to sympathize with a guy who makes a lifestyle choice to embrace his symbiont eating people. Yeah, he only eats criminals, but as we all know, criminality is related to mental illness and economic disadvantage. So to hell with Eddie Brock and his oily, muscly tapeworm. This movie is crap, and wait for another Deadpool movie. 50 cents, I'll suck your dick. <laughs> this piece of dog vomit was in development for more than two decades, which is a red light with pretty much any movie. Jim Henson's son Brian, who has been living with Muppets all his life, wanted to make a movie where Muppets are real, but you can't call them Muppets because of copyright. It's a good high concept, right? So then they make a stock standard police procedural with every buddy cop movie cliche imaginable, but they do it with puppets. Elizabeth Banks and Melissa McCarthy are wasted in this movie. It's just horrible. Brian Henson and I have very different ideas of what an edgy comedy is. This movie for all its sexy talk, its 1970s level understanding of drug dependency and its dismissive mockery of sex workers is about as edgy as a Nerf ball. This was a much better movie when Peter Jackson made it in 1989 as Meet the Feebles. Hello, if you're watching this, I'm dead. Based on Ernest Cline's 2011 novel, which was a book for the kind of video gamers who never read books, this movie is all about the Easter eggs. Ty Sheridan plays Wade Watts, a poor boy virtual reality guy who's as bland as, again, a Nerf ball. Mark Rylance plays a computer visionary called James Halliday who creates a virtual world imaginatively called the Oasis and he plays it like the character has been living on a diet of Valium for the last 20 years. Halliday has invented a virtual world so that people could escape from the increasingly dystopic real world instead of fixing it. Steven Spielberg, the director and producer of this film, is a billionaire and billionaires love finding ways of escaping the scary apocalyptic future. That's why Elon Musk wants to go to Mars and every other billionaire is building a luxury bunker somewhere in Montana. In this film we get Ben Mendelsohn playing the big bad corporate guy and even Mendo isn't given much to work with here. This movie is all Easter egg. 
pop culture and gamer culture characters are thrown into a blender without context or common sense because the makers of this movie cynically think that all the movie viewing public wants is bite-sized chunks of nostalgia. This movie is all Easter eggs, and like a chocolate Easter egg, it's a thin shell wrapped around absolutely nothing. It could be dangerous. Maybe I'll die. Bruce Willis gets two movies in this list. Hopefully M. Night Shyamalan's Glass will redeem him. In spite of the title of this movie, you're not getting gondolas and canals. The title refers to Venice, California, and Willis plays a down-and-out surfer and skateboarding private eye called Steve, who comes up against a street gang led by Jason Momoa, who then steals Steve's dog. That's what's at stake here, a not very charismatic dog. We get some good supporting actors like John Goodman and Famke Janssen, and Wikipedia says that this movie is a comedy, but it's about as funny as your favourite auntie's funeral. It would have been funnier if they call it Aquaman Stole My Dog. Which brings us to the second Bruce Willis movie. I want to buy a gun. This isn't a badly made movie. It's just morally repugnant. Based on Michael Winner's 1974 film starring Charles Bronson, which was so unreasonably popular that it spawned four sequels of decreasing quality over the subsequent 20 years, this 2018 remake is totally superfluous. And were there any justice in the world, it will not generate four sequels ending in 2038. Like the original movie, Death Wish is a middle-aged male revenge fantasy. Bruce Willis plays Paul Kersey, a trauma surgeon whose wife and daughter are killed and put into a coma respectively by a home invasion. After having a Glock 17 pistol literally fall at his feet in an emergency room, Kersey watches YouTube videos to learn how to use the pistol and becomes a hoodie-wearing vigilante of increasingly violent nature. His brother, played by Vincent D'Onofrio in a rare sympathetic role, is worried about him, and the movie goes on pretty predictably from there. This movie worships everything that's stupid and wrong about American gun culture. It's ugly gun nut Viagra. Strangely, Willis is very good in this horrible movie. With all the checks he's cashed in his career, it's often easy to forget that he's a good actor. But this movie is just toxic. Being Australian, it pains me to say that an Australian actor is not very good. But Sam Worthington's not a very good actor. And the Titan is given some really heavy emotional lifting to do, and it's painful to watch him strain to do it. In this film, he plays Lieutenant Rick Jansen, otherwise known as Lieutenant Generic Name, who in 2048 is part of a secret project to genetically engineer and surgically alter human beings to live on the Jovian moon Titan. He has a wife, Abigail, played by Taylor Schilling, and a son called Lucas. Most of the other experimental subjects go murderously insane because of plot stuff, and the United Nations secret project bosses led by Tom Wilkinson who specialises in evil bosses send in a SWAT team to end the experiment. Titan Rick, not to be mistaken for Pickle Rick, kills soldiers with his superhuman powers but things end well because love conquers all. Sam Worthington's a bit painful to watch in this one to be honest with you. And the plot is cliched and I liked it a lot better in 1963 when The Outer Limits did it as an episode called The Architects of Fear. The world's first super bio warrior. As a rule, I like Jackie Chan and I like Jackie Chan movies. On my best of 2018 list, there's another Jackie Chan movie, The Foreigner. That's the one to see. This one is fucking hopeless. Yes, it was filmed in my hometown, Sydney, and Jackie gets to fight a really tall woman on top of the, one of the, the sails of the Sydney Opera House, which has to be the biggest piece of product placement in movie history. Jackie plays a cop, blah, blah, cyborg, cyberpunk stuff, green screen action sequences, Cannon Mulvey is a villain, blah, blah, Kim Ginjal, blah, blah, and what does the title of the movie actually mean? Also, my theory is this. Jackie Chan did the fight on the top of the opera house 
to throw shade on his old friend Sammo Hung, who in the iconic Australian film The Man from Hong Kong in 1975 had a kung fu fight with Roger Ward on another Australian tourist attraction, Uluru. This one is a dog's breakfast. It's all over the place. It makes no sense. It's silly and it just shouldn't have happened. What's wrong with you? Making a dull movie about the woman who helped create science fiction who gave the world Frankenstein should never have happened. This movie is so careful and tentative that it sedates the viewer. Elle Fanning plays the title character and she's out of her depth here. Douglas Booth plays her husband Percy Bysshe Shelley with a K-pop boy band haircut. And Tom Sturridge plays Lord Byron who doesn't give us the character described by Lord Byron's mistress Lady Carolyn Lamb as being mad, bad and dangerous to know. While there's room for a movie about Mary Shelley's early life, it needed to be done in a less cautious and respectful way. There's also an opportunity for a movie about Mary Shelley's life after Frankenstein, which wasn't a happy life either, and in many ways was at least as interesting as her early years. We can control our weather. Disaster movies are a bit of a weird genre. They cater to our childish love of destruction, spectacle, and to see likable characters in peril. This one has destruction, but the spectacle is kind of meh, and the characters are as forgettable as that piece of toast you had for breakfast two weeks ago. Jer Storm has Gerard Butler being intense and angry as usual. It has weaponized weather control satellites and lots of things being destroyed. It has evil men causing heat waves in Moscow, a mega tsunami in Dubai, and a deep freeze in Rio before they try to destroy the American Democratic National Convention in Florida. This is a by-the-numbers disaster film which doesn't have the over-the-top craziness you need for this genre. It doesn't have gonzo moments like Randy Quaid going kamikaze in Independence Day, or Stanley Tucci having that last cigarette in the core. Geostorm has none of that. Two days after you watch it, you're going to forget it. The imminent destruction of everything we know and love begins. I'm keeping this one brief. It's a Markov Bay film. It wastes actors like Stanley Tucci, John Turturro and Anthony Hopkins. It mixes Arthurian mythology with 1980s toy merchandising. And the action scenes are like POV shots from a hood ornament in a 50 car pile up. Oh yeah, it has Mark Wahlberg in it as well. So those are my worst 10 movies that I watched this year. I do have a top 10 list which I'll be putting out very soon. Let me know whether you agree or disagree about these films and any movies that you think should be on the list but aren't. As usual, please hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And even though this one does sound a bit negative, when you hear the best of list, you're going to know that 2018 was a great year for movies as much as it was a great year for really bad movies. Music